Transitions are key to adding excitement to your edits. Unfortunately, many of the transitions built into Premiere are a little underwhelming. So today I'm gonna to show you how to make five slick transitions entirely within Premiere Pro, no third-party plugins needed. Be sure to stick around for a special surprise at the end of this video. First thing after dropping the clips into the timeline is to go to the new item button in the project panel and select the adjustment layer. This will be the backbone of these transitions going forward. Whatever effects are applied to them will affect all clips below them, including other adjustment layers. Open the adjustment layer in the source window and use these buttons to set the in and out points, somewhere between 20 and 30 frames. This will be the transition length. Finally, create a marker in the middle of the in and out points. Now, whenever I drag the adjustment layer into the timeline, I won't have to trim off the ends and the marker will snap to the center cut. If the layer isn't snapping, make sure to have snap in timeline selected or hit the S key. Now we can get started. A quality zoom transition can elevate your videos. Here's the quickest way to make one in Premiere. Add the adjustment layer to the timeline on top of the two clips. Add a transform effect, right click the layer, select rename and change the layer name to scale. This layer will power the motion of the zoom effect. In order to zoom in, the frame edges of the second clip need to be expanded, otherwise it results in an ugly crop. Place another adjustment layer under scale, trim it from the midpoint to the end, and add a replicate effect to create this tiling effect. Rename this layer to expand and change the count to three, creating the center tile. Back in the scale layer, use the transform effect to create scale keyframes at the beginning and end of the layer. Increase the scale of the end keyframe until the center tile fills out the frame. Create a keyframe at the midpoint of the transition as well. Right click the first keyframe and set it to ease out and set the last to ease in. Use the curves graph to fine tune the speed. This creates a ramp for the zoom. Disable use composition's shutter angle and set the shutter angle to 360 degrees. This will add motion blur to the transition. If you want a faster transition, just move the start and end scale keyframes closer to the midpoint. Last thing to do is to clean up these ugly tile edges. In the expand layer, apply a mirror effect for all four edges of that center tile. Set the reflection angle to zero degrees for the right edge and adjust the X value to reveal the mirror image. Line it up with the center tile edge. Set the opposite edge to 180 degrees. It will look like it disappeared, but it will reappear if you change the X value. Repeat for the top and bottom edges with the angles set to 90 degrees and negative 90 degrees, adjusting the Y values as needed. Now you have a smooth zoom transition. To zoom out, simply reverse the scale keyframes and move the expand layer to the other side of the cut. To zoom into one of the other tiles, animate the position keyframes in the scale layer and change the edge mirror settings. Now this next transition is super popular and for a good reason. But before I show you that, I have some exciting news to share with you. Production Crate has begun adding amazing transition plugins as part of the LaForge suite. To access them, you will need to have a pro account, but they're super easy to use and incredibly fast. Just drag and drop them right onto your cuts and watch the magic happen. All right, back to the tutorial. If zooms are the most popular video transition, what pans have to be a close second. Add an adjustment layer, apply an offset effect, and rename it Offset. In Shift Center 2, create keyframes at the start and end of the layer. Adjust the position values on the last keyframe for the direction and speed of the whip pan. Then create a midpoint keyframe. Right click the first keyframe and select Ease Out, and set the last one to Ease In. Adjust the speed using the curves graph. Add another adjustment layer with a directional blur effect and rename it D-Blur. In Blur Length, create keyframes at the start, end, and midpoint. Increase the blur length at the midpoint keyframe. Adjust the blur angle to match the direction of the transition. Zero degrees for vertical, 90 degrees for horizontal, or something like 135 degrees or 45 degrees if the movement is diagonal. This allows for extra whip pan control. Match the keyframe easing with the offset layer. If you see the edges of the offset effect, bring the keyframes closer to the midpoint. This shortens the length of the animation. Add a final adjustment layer with a lens distortion effect and rename it Lens D. In curvature, add keyframes at the start, end, and midpoint. Decrease the curvature at the midpoint and match the keyframe timing with the other two layers. This creates a cool panoramic effect. Now, those two will cover most of your transition needs, but they're also super common. Let's try something more creative, like a film roll transition made entirely within Premiere. Start by making the sprocket holes. Go to new item and add a color mat. Make it black and name it holes. Add the color mat on the timeline to match the length and midpoint of our adjustment layers. Next, apply a grid effect. Set the blending mode to normal, invert it, and change the size from to width and height sliders. Tweak the height, width, and border values to form the sprocket holes. Feel free to copy the ones I used here. Under opacity, 
select the square mask, invert it, and expand the mask until only the desired sprocket holes are visible. Add a Gaussian blur to the holes layer and increase the blurriness to soften the edges and add a slight bloom to the sprockets. Add a new adjustment layer underneath holes with a transform effect and rename it Scale. Adjust the scale until the footage fits within the sprockets. Add an adjustment layer, apply an offset effect, and rename it Offset. Under Shift Center 2, create start and end keyframes for the film roll effect. Move the X or Y value on the last keyframe to control the frame slides. Then add a midpoint keyframe. Add easing to the start and end keyframes for a smooth speed ramp. Add another adjustment layer above offset with a transform effect and name it zoom. Using the scale keyframes, I'm going to animate the sprockets coming into frame by having the clip zoom in and out. Feel free to customize your film roll with filters or grain. I'm going to add a layer at the very bottom with a rough and edges effect called corners. Set the edge type to cut, fractal influence to zero, and animate the border from zero to 200 to match the offset and zoom. This rounds down the corners of the clips during the transition. Now a popular effect I know that you've all seen in music videos and trailers is the blackout flicker. But every YouTube tutorial I've researched covering this effect suggests that you manually cut individual frames out. Thankfully, you can achieve this with one effect in Premiere. Create an adjustment layer with a strobe light effect and name it strobe. Set the strobe color to black so that it only flashes black frames. The strobe duration is the length of each strobe, while strobe period is its frequency. Set the duration to 0.01 and period to 0.02. This creates a rapid flicker. To slow down the strobe, just increase those two values, but keep a two to one ratio for the period and duration. But what if I want the flicker frames to come from the second clip? In the strobe effect layer, set operates on color only to makes layer transparent. Move the strobe layer and the second clip up and extend the clips to the ends of the strobe layer like so. Apply a track matte key to the second clip and select the strobe layer as the matte using matte alpha. Now the second clip will flicker over the first using the strobe's alpha channel. Now, I'm a big anime fan, and messing around with strobes got me thinking about one of my favorite trends that I've been seeing in animation lately, impact frames. They're sketchy, hyper-contrasty frames that add an element of reality-breaking intensity. Create an adjustment layer, apply a Lumetri color effect, and rename it Lumetri. Bring the saturation down to zero. Create another adjustment layer with a posterize effect and rename it Posterize. This effect is supposed to be super contrasty, so set the level to 2 or 3. If any desirable details are lost, go back to the Lumetri layer and adjust the curves to bring them back. Create another adjustment layer with a brush strokes effect and rename it Hatching. To create that sketchy look, increase stroke length and randomness and decrease stroke density. Lastly, add an adjustment layer with a strobe effect and set the period and duration values to 0.02 and 0.01 respectively. Set the color to white and strobe operator to difference to mimic the quick contrast inversions of impact frames. Optionally, you can add another adjustment layer with a tint effect and change the map white to your preferred color. That's just a handful of things that you can do in Premiere Pro for free, and I encourage you to try them out yourself. Now, if you stuck around, I'm sure you're wondering what that surprise I mentioned earlier was. In the description of this video, I've provided a link to a project file with all of these transitions pre-built for free. Simply sign into your free or pro production create account to download the file. In this project, you'll find these transitions as sequences, organized by resolution, style, and direction. When you open one of them, you will see the transition layers already grouped together with sample images to preview the transition. Simply drag the layer stack into your timeline and place it on a cut to apply the transition. Feel free to add your own effects, like the ones available in LaForge. And if you followed along with this video, you know how to go into each layer stack and change any of the settings to best suit your transition needs. Let us know if you would like to see these transitions built out into actual plugins, or if you'd like to see more Premiere tutorials in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, enjoy and make it awesome.